Hello friends, welcome to my next video tutorial of Start Pro version V8i concrete structure three dimensional analysis and model. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to assign various load and then how to assign gravity load, which is dead load and live load. To assign load, go to here general, then click here define load def and definition. Click here load cases details, then add. You can see here primary load generation define combination auto load combination so under this primary you can see here the number one loading type none you can see a lots of load case here but we don't want to use anything here just use this is load type none and here first define ea plus first load case is ex positive mean earthquake in x direction positive add then ex minus in x direction negative then e z plus then e z minus so why we are defining this earthquake first because in start pro if you define any load before earthquake then it will not allow you to analyze that's why we are defining this earthquake load first then we will define dead load dl then ll live load so someone define uh, lots of load case here for dead load say slab weight partition wall but i don't like that way because it's a wastage of time just under this dead load we can solve everything and under this live load we can call this all the live and then i have to define win load which is wx plus add then wx minus again wz plus then w z minus close so we have this type of load so earthquake load dead load live load wind load and now first i am going to show you how to assign dead load so to assign dead load i have what type of dead load we can make a list here dead load we have we have as i have already said we uh, i'm not assigning here slab so i have to calculate the slab weight here so if this is 5 in slab then i have 12.5 62.5 slab have then i have 25 p floor fin so this is these are the dead load and i have already defined column and beam so the weight will be counted there automatically as a self weight so total i have this one plus this one enter so 87.5 and if i check live load i have 40 psf live load as for residential building and i have partition wall and if you see this plan uh, if you see here we have no partition wall in this panel and also in this panel this panel is also empty this panel this panel empty only i have partition wall along and this panel also this panel and this panel the rule is you have to calculate the weight this part of this partition wall then you have to divide that with this panel area then you will get the flow load so just if i calculate this i have this or this panel i have approximately 11 feet 2 inch and in this direction 12 so say 12 by 11 so wall length is 11 plus 8.5 so if i calculate weight i have 11 plus 8.5 feet length wall into 0.415 inch then i want to calculate the whole length into height is i have height total 10 then i have to subtract 5 inch so which is 9.57 so 9 feet 7 inch into 120 is the unit weight of machinery then enter you can see i have 9181 pound then i have to divide that this one by 11 11 and by say 12 you can see almost 70 psf so i have 70 psf for this panel and if i calculate this panel i will get a load so on a minimum i have to assign as per my code 25 psf and you have to assign that as per your code so i have minimum 25 psf and if i make an average then i can do i have this panel almost 70 and if you calculate this pa panel you will get another load so 70 is huge load so an average we can assign 50 so i am considering a 50 another but the wise way you can as a an assign panel wise 
but it is also a better way to assign a uniform load because this load pattern may be changed at any time uh, that may not be possible to fix this load so we are considering a 50 another 50 and this is 40 so for better result and for more specific if you sure that the plan is fixed then you can do panel wise so i am showing a procedure here so 50 plus 40 is 90 so i have live load 90 so i have to assign the load here first go to here dead load then click here add then cell point cell load add close select this cell point and check here assign to view then assign yes cell point is assigned now go to dead load then add i'm going to assign this as a flow load click here flow load then i have dead load of say 87.5 i am assuming this is as 90 minus 90 which is keep for square feet so so i have load here 0.09 then i have to define her range which is it will work along y direction so if i go to here i have slab at this level so take node cursor click this node this is 16 feet and i have to go to up to say top at top i have 69 so actually we don't have so much load at top we can consider that up to here and i will assign load here and here later so i have up to here 56 so 16 is minimum and 56 is the maximum and it should be global y then add close and click that load you can see here a blue line so load has been assigned to this level we said blue now okay my dead load is done for floor i have to assign dead load for uh, part a uh, wall on beam and later i'm going to show that now live load add floor this is also 0 0.09 then the range is also 16 and 56 then add close you can see here the load has been assigned now so dead and live load has been assigned now i have to assign uh, okay now check how i can assign more load here so here is in this level i have load for water so if i have load of water say i have total five feet then five means slab more minimum six or seven is free board i can say i have four feet water into 62.5 is the unit weight of water then the load is 250 so i have to assign here as a live load 250 so live load add flow load minus 0.25 and take note cursor click here 64 so i can say 64 and also 64 then add and close if you click here you can see a load here then i have to assign dead load for this level go to here dead load so my dead load i can say the dead load for all this floor they are almost same so double click on this range then change that range to up to top 69 change this maximum to 69 then change close okay so my additional live load here done i have also live load here i have to assign a minimum live load here say go to here live load add then flow load say 40 psf i am assigning at the top then i have to check this is 69 then also this is 69 so minimum and maximum is 69 add close you can see a load has been assigned here so my flow load definition is done and you have to think carefully if you have any load s then if you think you have any additional load then you have to assign that on any particular floor and there is also another thing else if you see here this is my stair and i have not assigned a stair i'm just keeping this as a say regular floor so in case of stair i have additional load for this step and also the thickness of waste slab usually greater than the slab thickness so if i think 
I have to calculate the thickness so you can calculate from here so as per your code requirement so 12 feet the waist slab thickness and maybe a minimum 6 inch may work so I have assigned load here for 5 inch slab thickness and I have assigned live load of 90 and I have minimum 80 for for stir so this is okay so I have to assign for additional 1 inch slab thick load so I am say I am assuming this is 7 inch and this is 7 inch and also I have weight of this step so if you want to calculate the weight of step then you have to do this way you can calculate just I am showing you proceed the length is 3 feet 8 first click now first check the number this is 9 9 so 18 knots then I have triangular shape so 0.5 into 6 inch riser 0.5 feet into 10 inch trade 0.83 3.66 length then if I multiply this with 150 then I can get the total weight of the uh, steps then if I just divide this by this panel area so this panel area will be 8 feet 6 I can divide by this by 12 so 8 divided by 12 which is 8.5 so I have additional 20 so 20 and I think this uh, slab may be 7 inch so I have already assigned 5 inch load I have an another 2 inch so I have 2 inch 2 into 12.5 per inch plus 20 then I have 45 so I have to assign additional 45 PSF dead load along this stair panel so go to here dead load add floor load minus 0 0.045 is 45 then the range is y range is 16 to 56 then I have to specify the x and z range so click this point you can see the x is 13.666 and z is 30.28 and if you click here so this is 20 point x 20 here is x 30 so this is minimum x is minimum x 13.666 and z is 30.28 to 5 then if you click this point you have to click a diagonal on this two point to check the minimum and maximum coordinate so I have maximum X of 22.093 and maximum Z of 45.75 so my range has been defined now close this one and add close and if you click here you can see you have to go to here so I have this load so it is very difficult to check if the load has been assigned but you have to be careful while you are assigning this and additional load will be assigned on that specific panel you have defined here so you have to be careful to assign this coordinate from here so our load on floor is done now now we have load for this wall you can see here the load on the beam so I have to assign load on beam so if I calculate the load I can calculate while I have beam then I have the beam size 1.5 feet which is 18 inch so height is 8.5 feet wall height into 0 0.41 is the wall width then I want to calculate for 1 feet then 120 is my unit and then the total load is 418 PLF so I have to assign load on wall 41 so I can select this one pressing control this one this one this one also this one right click new view ok and this way before I select this I have to go to here select dead load which is the dead load then add then member load I have minus 0 0.420 which is GY add close now select all this beam then select this load and a must select here uh, check here assign to selected beams then assign yes the load has been assigned just close this model and reopen 
then if you go to a load case you can see now the load so okay now you can check you can check now the load you can see here the uh, additional load you have assigned on this particular area has been assigned and also you can check the load you have assigned on the floor if you go to 3d then you can check that load has been assigned to the flow of to beam then select this this roof any roof floor beam then go to here and here is a thing you can see here the load has assigned also on this small size beam that we have uh, defined to assign load here for here you can see here we have some uh, railing weight here so if i calculate maximum railing weight i have three feet plus three feet so three feet drop wall and three feet railing wall which is three inch concrete so 0.25 is width then height is six feet then one feet length then 150 is the unit weight then you can see two to five pound per feet so i have to change here the load has assigned also on this beam you can see we have double beam here so if i assign load here we have to remove load from here just i am removing load from here just i am showing you this one floor you have to do that for all floor so select this beam then if you double click on this load and you can see here two check marks so you can see this beam double tick mark then uncheck this then change close you can see see there is no load now then select this beam this beam and this beam and this beam we have railing weight here or parapet weight here then double click on this then uncheck the load to remove this one this one this one this one so done change close okay there is no load now now go to here dead load add member load i have minus 0.2 to 5 gy which is 0.225 keep perfect add close select this one now select these beams assign to selected beam assign yes this way you have to assign load on this small size beam for this from the railing or dropper so after you have assigned all this floor then you have to go to on this roof then new view okay you can check here there is no load we have assigned here so you have to assign load here because this is your beam going to be continue because this area will be for the stair room so you have to assign load here you can assign this amount of load for this beam then select this one and assign load then you have to assign load for parapet wall so if you want to assign parapet wall say maximum 3 feet 5 inch machinery wall 0 0.41 is thickness or width into three height into one is my length then into 120 unit weight of machinery then almost 150 pound per feet then dead load add member load minus 0 0.150 gy add close now you have to select this beam manually because we have perpetual load here then select this load assign to selected beams assign okay this floor is done now you have to go to here we have another here and we have load here for concrete uh, for the overhead water reservoir so in my country it is six inch wall which is 0.5 thick then i have a height at the top i have minimum one feet beam so i am considering this four feet height into one feet length into one five zero unit then i have to define 300 pound per feet load on this beam then go to again here dead load add member load minus 0 0.30 keep per feet add close select this then select this beam then assign to selected beam assign okay done and the last we have the top floor so in the top floor obviously you have something so you can assign some load there if you think uh, not to assign any load you can do but uh, there will be uh, say if you want to um, construct a parapet above here so this there may have a possibility so i can assign some load here so here add member load i am just 
showing minus one zero one hundred pound per feet load a minimum load in any parapet wall in practical then the load will cover this then assign yes so this is the way it is you have to be practical about assigning load so where you have load then you have to assign load and you have to assign load as per your code and also you have to consider all the additional weight you have on this model as i am not assigning here everything so you have to consider the load for every member you have not assigned in this model so these are the way of assigning gravity load and uh, assigning the various load case thanks for watching my this video uh, if you like this video do subscribe my channel and see you in the next video